Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed of a from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. I may not have all the time to just teach on them. I just want to list them and will pray. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Someone in the media, I just saw the power of God. And I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Submit to your work in me till the Christ be formed in me, till your glory be formed in me, till your power rests on me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Pillar number one. Please write if you can. If you're with the Holy Ghost, that's fine. You came to church. This is what this is about. The seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. This is the first pillar. Seven of them God has given the message of salvation. This is the first and the greatest mandate that we have. Please listen, Koinonia Global. Everyone who is part of this vision, I want you to hear. This represents the jurisdiction of our call, our assignment, the mantle that works upon this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. John 3, 16 and 17. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son john 3 16 and 17 that whosoever believeth in him listen carefully should not perish but have everlasting life 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved our first mandate as a ministry is to see to it that the revelation of jesus as savior reaches the ends of the earth in order of priority the greatest task and assignment upon this vision and indeed i believe it extends to every true commission of jesus christ across the globe is the message of salvation predicated upon the fact that all have seen romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god this is the verdict of God as touching the fallen man. Verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, and when you read from verse 10, Romans 10 and verse 10, here's what it says, that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, we're reading to 13, it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, hallelujah, shall not be ashamed. Verse 12, it says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek when it comes to the need for salvation. There is no difference between the educated and the uneducated. There is no difference between Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. There is no difference between the Spanish, the Indian, the Caribbean. As far as the need for Jesus is concerned, it says, for the same Lord is rich over all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our assignment is to propose Jesus as Savior, to reveal the plan of redemption. I have told you, the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the Father's love 
revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus his son are we together now to the end that men and creation listen carefully that as you place your faith upon Jesus you would receive the life of God that is the promise that we have been given we must let the nations know that Jesus saved not just that Jesus gives prosperity in order of priority the salvation of their soul is far superior to prosperity and any other thing this is why we travel from pillar to post this is why we carry the burden of the gospel across the nations it is more than just an exegesis of truth you only transform people who are saved remember in this house i have taught you that the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of an unbeliever is not welfare welfare may provide a momentary succor jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Nadau kaka sunanka ubangi chika isaya bo nagir mama sunanka ubangi chi. Nina dau kaka sunanka bo bangi chika isaya bo nagir mama sunanka Listen to me ladies and gentlemen for as long as he keeps us alive and for as long as there is breath in our nostrils we will let the nations know that he died for them that there is a way out they must not go to hell the holy ghost is walking with us he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you this is why we are doing our uk conference this is why we are going to the us canada and as many places as he would take us this is why we travel from pillar to post within and outside this nation sometimes you are tempted to ask why this stretch i saw our father in the lord daddy Gio, and at his age this man still travels from pillar to post and one time i got to a discussion with one of his people and I said wow daddy is still traveling like this won't he rest and they laughed he said I will rest when I get to heaven now that is a warrior indeed that for as long as he's alive and breathing with this body even if it means to spend it for him the gospel the message of salvation Believers, anybody who is not harvest conscious, mission conscious, is not truly connected to this vision. The first pillar that drives what we do, the first message is the message of salvation. Number two, very quickly, what is the second doctrinal pillar that drives this vision? The message of transformation. Write it down. When we get people saved, we do not leave them at that realm. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, But be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. This is why the word of God in this ministry gains utmost supremacy. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. Reading to 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, 
and instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect there means matured, entire, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That means scripture affects every realm of life. Whether you are in ministry, you are in business, it can make you furnished unto all good works. The message of transformation is what brings us into the, the teachings of the mysteries of the kingdom. The ability to impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The teaching ministry is built upon this second mandate. The message of transformation. Don't forget what we're considering tonight. This is the message. The seven doctrinal pillars that guide and represent what we do. The message of transformation. So every week when you come in and as we travel across the regions, teaching from one dimension to the other, the spirit of revelation that he has granted us so lavishly is to the end that the saints be equipped, be entire, be matured. And I can tell you that for as long as he keeps us alive and healthy, we will continue to learn the ways of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for the third? Very quickly, what is the third doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision? The message of empowerment. The message of empowerment. God has granted us the unique ability to reveal and demonstrate the reality of his power. That under our watch, our generation cannot be bankrupt of power. This cannot be a powerless generation. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we read it already. Micah 3 verse 8, we read it already. This is where the teaching on the ministry of the Holy Spirit comes. Listen, when you see us spend time in worship, when you see us spend time building intimacy with the Holy Spirit, when you see us invest time in the prayer ministry, it is because we have been given the message of empowerment. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Are we together? Yes. We must pray and cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We have been given the message of empowerment. Can I tell you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is real. This is why you see some of the manifestations that happen, happen. It is because it is not just a desire, it is a mandate and a ministry. And there are angels that are sent to signify that revelation according to revelation chapter 1 and verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto john to show his servant the things that must shortly come to pass the bible says and he sent it and signified it by his angel when god gives mandates there are angelic release that ensure that every time you are walking in that mandate certain results should happen he sent it and signified it by his angel so the message of salvation the message of empowerment I mean the message of transformation the message of empowerment what is number four very quickly the message of the supernatural this is where signs and wonders come in hallelujah signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural the message of the supernatural signs wonders deliverances breakthroughs god has not only given us the mandate to impart his grace and to empower god's believer but the demonstration of the reality of the kingdom the supernatural signs and wonders and miracles acts 4 33 and the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Let's read Romans 15, 19 together. Romans 15, 19 together. It says, through mighty signs and wonders, 
by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ the gospel of Christ is not fully preached until the dimension of signs and wonders is captured it said through mighty things through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached we will not preach a half gospel the ministry and the message of the supernatural that means the supernatural should not be strange to you as a believer and then connected to this vision is why you see all kinds of things there are strange manifestations of the spirit that sometimes I just wonder he's in Koinonia remaining to just have people start flying around while service is going on <laughs> by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing number five what is the fifth doctrinal pillar are you ready number number five is a very serious one the message of purpose write it down the message of purpose kingdom advance put in bracket and societal transformation the message of purpose kingdom advance and societal transformation this is where our teachings on witnesses raising agents of change and so on and so forth understanding the cosmos you see now you see me bring several teachings I'm showing you that the teachings that you hear week in and week out are guided by these pillars the message of purpose watch this what gives credence to your empowerment what gives credence to all your desires is purpose and this is the challenge respectfully speaking with the body of Christ we understand things we want things but we do not connect them to purpose we want prosperity without purpose increase without purpose this is where I so greatly miss dr. Miles Monroe hearing me from heaven may God bless you sir I will say it more personally when we get there but for now on behalf of Jesus and his people thank you for helping us walk in purpose it is the reason why by the grace of God he brought the message of purpose and of the kingdom his first book that I read discovering your potential or understanding your potential and then all of his books about the kingdom any of his book you find read it you have my endorsement provided it is him please read it hallelujah now watch this it was dr miles munro by the grace of god that brought the transformative dimension of the gospel to me because coming from an evangelical background with all due respect we were not properly mentored in translating the reality of the gospel to a context that advances kingdom and transforms society and many many men and women of God respectfully speaking we are very limited in our doctrinal scope I was having a discussion with some diplomats earlier this year and we were discussing Africa they, you know and um, just discussing why in spite of the several churches in Africa and several of us men of God we have not seemed to attain onto a standard of freedom from corruption moral decadence and other things and I did observe lovingly and respectfully to them that the problem is the content and the scope of our teachings that there is hardly applicability to the many teachings that are upon our pulpits and I say this with every sense of honor respect and responsibility there is a lot of gyration there is a place for that there is a lot of you know spiritism activities you know but the the, the point of application when you study homiletics classically speaking in theology 
one of the things they teach you homiletics is the art of teaching and preaching there must be a point of application to your teaching are we together so no matter what route you take at the end of your discourse you are mandated to leave your audience with the point of application they must know what to do with the message you have given them and let me tell you this i, I think it was while i was preaching in ghana that i said this we must be able to bring the context of the gospel in Africa that empowers people to be useful Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And the key is purpose. Are we together? If I teach you on prosperity, I must teach it in such a way that does not just make you a money monger and a fanatic just wanting money without purpose. It's why we have a lot of young people right now on rampage. Once they touch a few millions, they begin to misbehave because they were only taught finances without God and without purpose. So they crash land what was supposed to be a blessing destroys them. A man gets married to a woman, they don't understand the purpose of the marriage. So they don't know what to do with themselves. A man gets a job, he got educated, does not know what to do. Purpose is what gives longevity to impact. Are we together? So when we teach about being witnesses, when we teach about being ambassadors, as God has so graciously granted us the grace to have a, the unique expression of our school of ministry. All of this is in honor to this foundational pillar, the message of purpose. We must understand God's program. We must understand societal transformation. Hallelujah. In John chapter 18 and verse 37, John 18, 37, let's look at a few scriptures. John 18, 37, watch this. Jesus is standing before Pilate and here's what he has to say. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. He said, To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Say purpose. Acts chapter 26, when you read from verse 12, this is now Apostle Paul standing before King Agrippa, if you remember, to make defense of the gospel. They had granted him an opportunity audience with King Agrippa. And here was his discourse. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, uh -huh, it says, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me 14 it says and when we were all fallen to the earth i heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the hebrew tongue saul saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks 15 it says and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest watch purpose now but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which in which i will appear unto you reading to 19 it says delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me the last verse he says whereupon o king agrippa I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Without purpose, there is nothing to be obedient unto. Listen to me. Dr. Miles Munro will say your purpose and assignment is not what you are living for. It's what you can die for. When it has to do with purpose, it takes more than living. You must be willing. The hymn writer says, I'll be a true soldier i'll die at my post nobody will kill you you will finish your assignment in full in the name of jesus i rebuke untimely death Amen. don't fear death death has an ear it is a rider upon one of the four horses in revelation 
the rider upon the pale horse he said his name is death death is a spirit you can cast it far from you it is not a mysterious phenomenon that has that has unrestrained dominion over you no sir the bible says oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory for death could not hold him captive even in the grave jesus is lord for death will not hold me captive even in the grave jesus listen i want you to have an understanding that until your assignment is done no spirit not by witchcraft not by accident not by bloodshed of wicked men and terrorists now don't feel bad about those who may have gone before you don't worry thank god they died in christ but since you are now alive somebody say i will finish strong let the devil hear you say i will finish strong by this profession of faith i cause every manifestation of untimely death as a pattern if there is anyone here your family members just seem to be dying anyhow and you are asking who is the next person i say it prophetically the last death will be the last don't drive out in the morning wondering will i return did you not read what the psalmist said that i slept and i waked for the lord sustained me listen if there was anybody who should die in the bible a lesson to refuse to die is job a man who had all the boils and the plagues i'm not a medical doctor but i know there is no record of job going to the hospital in that situation he should die he refused mm. i know my redeemer liveth he said though he slay me yet will i trust him and at the end of his life he was healthy enough to have double of children again say I refuse to die this is not out of fear no in Christ even when he said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord but Paul said that I remain is expedient for you there are lands to conquer there are several things to do are we together yes several lands to conquer don't 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 glorify death in a point to a point that you make it look as if it can just take you anyhow no that's not what happens to believers the bible calls transition for the believer sleep and it says they that sleep sleep at night when you sleep in the daytime it's called siesta it's a short nap to rise up they killed paul he said i've not finished they kill him again he said i've not finished when he finished he said i've finished even jesus said it is finished everybody saying it is finished and then they leave for as long as you have not said it is finished it is not over are we together the message of purpose in matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16 jesus was speaking about the this about the believer in christ here's what he calls us with respect to purpose he says we are salt he said we are light go to verse 16 for sake of time in verse 16 he says to let your light so shine before men these are the teachings that now relate to purpose let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven matthew 28 please give us from verse 18 to 20. we call this the great commission here's what jesus said to do he spake unto them saying all power the word power there is exousia authority in is given to me in heaven and in earth 19 go ye therefore does that look like a mandate and teach all nations this synoptic account does not just say preach the gospel as mark presented his own he said take time and teach how many nations so don't ask me what i'm doing in uk don't ask me what i'm doing in the u.s don't ask me what I'm doing in Canada. Once he gives us the matching order, we have a scripture that backs us. If he says, teach all nations, it means he's opened the door for the nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The last verse, he said, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, while you are on this business, know that I am with you all way, even to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Purpose. Very, very important. Jesus was teaching us how to pray. And in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, he said, Thy kingdom come, and he said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is interested in the earth. Listen to me. Purpose and destiny is very important. It's not just enough to be anointed. It's not just enough to be warded. You must be purpose-driven. And your purpose, I have taught you here endlessly, and I will repeat myself again. Your purpose represents your contribution first to kingdom advancement and then to societal transformation every purpose in christ has a twofold approach it benefits the program of god and it benefits the nation wherein you are domiciled there is no man that has been used by god that was a cause to his society that is why i dare to say that the church is not a nuisance the true church it's not a nuisance, not to Nigeria, not to any nation. We are active contributors of nation building by number one, connecting people to faith, which becomes the principle that guides their moral conduct, etc. Number two, giving them a superior orientation, albeit driven from scripture, that helps them to make quality decisions that eventually translate to advancement, development, and nation building. The church is not a curse. The true church is not a curse. You shut down the church in any nation, if that church is truly light, that nation should experience moral decadence and bankruptcy to a point that the government says, no, 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 no. We have seen your value. You are light. You are salt. Are we together? That means because Koinonia is here in Abuja, in Nigeria and across the globe connecting by way of covenant every nation where we are represented not just physically but even if there is one person who is connected to this ministry anywhere across the globe your territory should see Jesus in your life are we together praying in the Holy Ghost and jumping and becoming a nuisance to society is 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 not um you are not representing the gospel properly hallelujah the message of purpose let me finish up number six what is the sixth foundational pillar doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision are you ready the message of unity and love the message of unity and love when we talk about love and you hear me emphasize the unity of the body of Christ, it's not just a passion. This message is so powerful. Bless God for my dear parents. They named me even after this mandate, not knowing. My name means the way to love. Very powerful name. Some of us come from backgrounds where they name you after something. If, if, if your name is, is a cause, change it. There is nowhere changing your name leads you to hell. People change their name. Jabez changed his name. Are we together? I said, what kind of thing did my mother call me like this? I love her, but I will change it. Oh God, change my story. Jacob held on to God and said, I'm not a cheat and a supplanter. Change my destiny. Hallelujah. I hope you know that names are very prophetic. Yes. It's not just a means of identification. When they call you, they are invoking something upon your destiny. Why would God change a man's name from Abraham to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, Cephas to Peter, Saul to Paul? It's in your Bible. Because of a name, a prophet's mouth was shut. John wanted to call. Only God knows what his father would have called him. He would have called one kind of Jewish thing that would have destroyed that young boy's destiny. And the angel said, shut his mouth. He's a priest. If he keeps calling by that name until he agreed 
John on paper, his mouth open, no prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Parents, name your children well. Don't hold a, a godless ceremony where people are drinking and smoking and somebody just comes out under the influence of spirits and say it shall be called this. No. Right from the time you're... Listen, listen. I'm not... Please, I'm not being... I'm not being sarcastic. I'm serious here. This is... We're speaking about the mandate. Are we together? Let me advise you. Naming ceremony does not have to be some, some activity of the flesh driven by people who don't even fear God. I expect any responsible father from when your wife tells you she's pregnant, you should be on your knees. Like Manoah. Lord, this child that is coming from heaven, what is his destiny? What name do we call him? You don't sit down and place a lifelong identification upon somebody just under the influence of familiar spirits. Hallelujah. He shall be called John. For Jesus the angel had to come and say, He shall be called Jesus, Emmanuel. Joseph did not say, Jesus looks like a nice name. If he was wrong, if he imagine if Jesus' name was John. Look at the confusion that would have happened to their ministries. Back to our discussion the message of unity and love. Listen to me. I truly believe with all my heart. That the unity of faith is attainable this is the reason why you see as a ministry and as a person i have profound honor for the body of christ you will never hear me call a man of god's name to criticize him to tear him down no i may challenge wrong doctrines i have my reservations but god has given me the flexibility to navigate around the body i have preached in Maybe there are few major denominations where I've not preached in. Severally. All kinds of places have gone there. And some of them, they may not even think I may come because they feel, ah, will you come? I say, me? I'll come. Hallelujah. Expecting perfection from the body in terms of blamelessness is a waste of time. It will never happen. God gave me this revelation. Listen to my teaching, the unity of faith. It is very important. John said, I saw seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, he said, was one who looked like the Son of Man. The lampstand represents the Catholic Church, the universal church. With all her imperfection, Christ is still in the midst of her. If you look for trouble in church, you will find it. If you look for Satan in church, you will find him. You will look, you, it, the church is a place where you find everything you are looking for. Because he said, he that seeketh find it you are looking for wicked people in church you will find them you are looking for hypocrites in church you will find them are we together you are looking for unserious people who are not born again you will find them witches and wizards you will find them familiar spirits you will find them the holy spirit you will find him this is a church and in the midst of it jesus is still standing by that her wife like a faithful husband do you leave your wife when she's injured if you run away from your wife because of an injury, are you a good husband? He's a faithful husband. He loves unto death. He stands by his Eve. No matter how bruised, he still stands. Are we together? Yes. We must preach unity in the body of Christ. This is why you see me advocating. I dislike and I detest men of God taking advantage of their pulpits to tear down other people. No, no, don't. If you're a man of God here, don't do it. Don't do it. That is not your assignment. Don't stand to tear down another man of God's work and criticize other people. No, no, no. You can challenge wrong doctrines. You can correct what needs to correct, but respect what everybody is doing. Because you see, the trouble in the body of Christ will never end provided people keep fighting others every time you fight a man of god those who are loyal to that man of god and love the vision will respond to 
and so the, the the fight will be endless there are many people who have no business fighting one another is their fathers their spiritual fathers that have caused that thing because subliminally they have communicated a body language once i see you associating with this and that you are a demon you are a devil it is wrong that doctrine comes from the pit of hell it's a doctrine of demons once upon a time the disciples looked at some people and said should we call down fire and jesus looked at them this is a generation better than elijah generation elijah calls down fire jesus converts and brings people by his mercy are we together yes do not use your status your influence or your position to tear down no respect the fathers give the fathers their due honor our fathers of faith in this nation deserve our honor till the day they go to their graves I don't care what we see or what we do not see. Noah saw his father, I mean, um, the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. One of them was laughing at the nakedness because Noah was drunk. The other went behind and covered the father's nakedness. Even though the father was drunk, he woke up and knew who saw him and said, who was watching me while I was drunk? And he cursed him, he said, a servant of servants shall you be. The eyes of Eli may be dim, but Eli is still prophet. Samuel, it will take Eli for your anointing to come to manifestation. Let's be careful, especially the generation rising. Just because by reason of elevated grace, we can see some things that may need to be corrected. You've heard me say it. The people we are raising are also seeing our own mistakes. There will be a corrected version of us. And there is nothing to be proud of, to, to be ashamed about. One generation improves upon another. We saw all the mistakes of Papa Hagin and our fathers. We read some of their books and we say, wow, this man is great, but look at the limitations here. This is what they saw. Revelation is progressive. All that we are shouting and bragging today, I've told you, there is a generation God is preparing. I'm only praying that humility will keep them till they even manifest. One day they will listen to Joshua Selman's message. And they will lovingly correct a few things. They'll say, wow, look at what he said. Well, it's at his level. <laughs> Absolutely. It will be pride to believe we are the omega of revelation. No. Does not, it, it, that, is, that is an insult to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sow a seed of honor now. So that when your turn comes your sons both physical and spiritual even when they see the gaps in your understanding because you sow the seed of honor to the fathers you will also receive a harvest of honor from the sons are we together very important i preach the message of unity to the body of christ and i've said it again and again make reference to my birthday broadcast i don't know if it was last year or year before last and i thought that there are keys that help people number one is mutual honor you cannot downgrade listen this is a charge respectfully speaking every man of god that has the ears to listen to me now listen you don't tear down demean a man of god demean the work he's doing demean the ministry demean everything and then expect unity it doesn't work that way it's like slapping you matching your feet pushing you and then saying come and hug me we are one and then doing it again it does not work that way See, let me tell you, as a principle, when I travel to regions, because of what God has done and, you know, the grace that he has placed upon our lives at this level, people get excited and sometimes I can already sense that, you know, these things come, frankly speaking, with maybe a sense of intimidation here and there. And I meet men of God, colleagues in ministry, senior colleagues, sometimes contemporaries, and then those who are looking up to us. And you can see sometimes this sense of unworthiness. Apostle Joshua Selman is in town. I am very quick to observe it. That listen, I have not come to downplay and demean and rubbish what the men of God are doing. It is because they are serious that we can even have a crowd to preach to. I have only come to support what they are doing. And you see that a lot of the pastors, their hearts are open and they support, they embrace. When you see pastors look like they are fighting one another, it's not because they are evil people. 
it is because either the man of God always gives an impression like everybody is doing nonsense we are the ones who know what we are doing it's a very wrong philosophy or number two Joshua Selman will come into a city and push everybody and make it look like you are not serious no Sometimes we are sitting and discussing with men of God and I say, okay, about this question, say something. I say, ah, I should say what? Where you are here? And I say, what does that mean? You know, for some of you, you'll be happy because it means, ah, be careful. That's how many die. If the Holy Ghost is there and is listening, who are you not to listen? <laughs> Hallelujah. I have sat down with people, fellow men of God, pastors, and even my dear sons and daughters in ministry, sometimes I ask them questions and I keep quiet and I listen to them. And I listen sincerely to learn. One of the greatest transformation in this ministry came about maybe 12, 12 or 13 years ago. When I asked everyone who were very small then that time, maybe a little, not more than three, four hundred, everybody to write his suggestion on what we can do to improve the ministry don't write your name so that we don't even know who you are be polite be sincere but state what can happen i sat down and i read every one of those suggestions i was amazed at the intelligence of the people i was leading can i tell you when you become alpha and omega your ministry will become a reflection of your limitation but when you open up sincerely knowing that i'm only called by grace it does not mean i know everything now people can be able to support you in love with superior intelligence anything i do not know something about or not enough about sincerely even if it is a baby that can teach me i will humble myself and listen how can i learn to improve myself run away from pride is a killer when Jesus sat down with the little children, he was not preaching to them. He was listening to them. You would be surprised what he got from them. Are we together? Are we together? So, you are part of this vision. Understand that God has given us a message to mend some of these unnecessary broken relationships in the body of Christ that has short-circuited the program of God and let me tell you for every man of God who has contributed to promoting love and unity in the body of Christ as a ministry we honor and we salute you may God bless you wherever you are and whoever you are whether in Nigeria and in Africa that you have become an active contributor listen I have traveled to places where I've seen the things that men of God have done for me. I've been humbled by their humility. Some of them literally shelved their ministries and everything. This UK conference we are planning now, you cannot imagine how many people, pastors and leaders, as though they don't have churches, plunging their all. How could you dishonor people who bend over backwards that much? No. I travel to go and minister and sometimes the men of God will tell me, Apostle, this is home. Feel free. Some of them will vacate their offices and vacate their seats for me to sit down and counsel people. And the man of God who heads the church will be standing somewhere like a protocol. And I feel very uncomfortable. I say, sir, please, come and sit down. Let's do it together. And they say, no, 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 Apostle. These people traveled and they came to see you. What, what security to be able to do that? And then I would come and now downplay them. Would that be fair? And then say, let's be one. No. No. There must be mutual respect in the body of Christ. Listen, if you don't believe another man's mandate, leave him with God. But an attempt to fight another man's mandate, when he succeeds, you will bend your head in shame forever. There are many, many young people today who were mocked at, talked bad at, and now God is helping lifting them across Nigeria, Africa, and those who said all kinds of things. Maybe they made mistakes. No. Don't call on clean what God has called clean. Are we together? Yes. I believe in people. 
when I travel to Zaria or sometimes you see people from various campuses, they come here to see me after service. And some of those people come to see me and they are looking as if they are looking at some angel and I tell them, gentlemen, listen, everybody was at this level. Some of us, we were not believed that when we were at that level. There were people who even prayed that we failed. It's the mercy of God that brought us this far. So my job is to love you and I look, if there is anything to correct, you correct in love and support them. For as long as I live, I will be an active supporter of younger ministries coming. I say this and I will repeat it again. Where there is need for correction, you correct, you guide, you help, but you don't throw the baby under bad water. Some of the people God is raising will be by far better than us. Some of you are here looking at me. Don't worry. Just keep listening. Where you see that we did not do well, just pray for us. But I tell you, let God sharpen you like an arrow and you will become an improvement to what we are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The message of unity and love. So after service, do well to hug someone. Some of you already came and you insulted everyone. Those who are sitting near you, it's as if they are unclean because you are prophet yourself who are sat down there now be careful this sermon is to edit to give you a new orientation don't look down at people yes they may not have revelation like you yet yes they may not have this and that but be disciplined is this indiscipline that is destroying people in church they will tell someone come and take offering you will come and say i'm seeing something and spend two hours wasting time because of no Closing prayer. Pray and go and sit down. I hope you are learning. You must learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. Many people will annoy you, including me. Learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. More than forgive, learn to forbear. Apostle, you don't know my pastor. The way I'm even looking at him now, I say, I should carry it. Mm. That is now a Luciferian spirit. Don't go that route love walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instrument of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instrument of peace today god has helped me but i'm a product of many ministries i have honor and regard to all the people that god used to raise me many of them are alive today I honor them till the day that they see his face. My principal in the seminary is still alive. And every time I have the opportunity to honor him, I will honor him. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi, honor them. These are fathers of faith that saw us and believed in us when there was nothing. Can I tell you, some of the pastors, we used to do evangelism every Saturday. Discipleship. Not this thing that Pentecostals do. Proper discipleship that you sit down with a notebook. Already prepared. It's not what you are guessing. Hospital visitations. All of these things was part of the training that has made us today. Just because God has helped us to be where we are, we should never look down at them. Some of them may not have all the revelation. But we don't come close to the character and stability that some of them had. Some of you may need to go back to some of your orthodox churches and greet your reverend, even as a prophet, and bend your head and say, good afternoon, sir. And if he says, my son, how are you? John. Don't say, no, they now call me prophet John. What is that? <laughs> you bend that head and let him bless you sincerely. Are, are you listening now? say I've become a big man there are people till tomorrow if I see if I cannot go down my knees I will bend my head in honor to them their impact in my life remains indelible till Jesus comes 
one of the people that God used to get me filled with the Holy Spirit, they visited my family house sometime last year. When I was told, I was so, so happy. A dear woman of God, years ago from Kaduna State, that God used, God used this woman to file us in the Spirit. As young people, it was under her watch and her brother, we started something called Operation Catacruz. He was praying in tongues till morning. Now she's gone to be with the Lord. I said they should find where her child is. And may God grant me the grace that I will sponsor that child till she's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray. But I want to encourage you before I give you the last one. Some of you may need to go back memory lane and start thinking of the people who believed in you when you were nothing. Are we together now? And start, come back to them and say, God has helped me now. It doesn't have to be in the fivefold ministry. And see what you can do to help them. If they don't need your help, you can do something to their children. Oh, I hear that your child is now in secondary school. How much is the school fees? 20,000. We've paid half, remaining half. And you're a multi-millionaire. That's an insult to you. What is your millions for then? When you can sit down and say, young boy, just love God. Let me take off this stress and help you. Your father did this and that to me. There was a time I was crying. Your father could not preach, but he came and wrapped his arms around me. Don't forget people who help you when you rise. But my message is that as a ministry, we have been given a message of love and unity. I don't just preach to you. God knows and you know. That I love you from the depth of my heart. Even the devil knows. You cannot preach to a people that you really do not love. When I meet with the workers, they know that I love them. They know that I love the leaders. I will never use people in this ministry. It is to love and to give. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The message of unity and love. So from tonight, become an advocate. Of unity and love don't because of your love and passion for koinonia and Joshua Selman tear down any man of God and tear down any ministry and say you guys are just playing in your church you are playing games come to koinonia and see things mm -mm. that is not part of your assignment you are doing another thing that God did not ask you to do are we together till today as a man of God there are people today I can hear that they are organizing programs somewhere and I call someone and say, okay, send me this man. Okay, how are you? I hear you're organizing a program somewhere. Yes, so apostle. I'm just saying it not for pride, but for you to know, okay, here's a little seed to support you people on what you are doing. And some of them are aware of some of, some of the not too good things that they've said. And that does not matter. Like Joseph, when God has elevated you, it's easy to forgive and let go. When you are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted by God. There's nothing the devil can do about it. There's one song that says, The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. You know that song? The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. If you rise by knowledge, you don't fear your growth. Because wisdom and knowledge, according to Isaiah 33, are stabilizers. They bring you stability. You only fear your success if you rise by mistake. Are we together? Let me give you the last and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. The last doctrinal pillar that captures our mandate as a ministry is the message of lasting peace and fulfillment write it down the message of lasting peace and fulfillment this is where we teach on relationships we teach on prosperity we teach on success we teach on fulfillment because it is important we have been given that mandate by God to help people follow the path of lasting even eternal peace and fulfillment three scriptures and then we'll pray ecclesiastes 12 and verse 12 
It's a scripture that has remained in my heart. And further by this, my son be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end, it says. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. You may even want to add 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, Mark 8, 36, Mark chapter 8, it says, For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So listen, our pursuit as we help people is so that they can live meaningful lives. I've taught you that success is not a gift that you give yourself. Make reference to two of my teachings. Number one, the law of seasons. And number two, what seest thou? Two teachings that deal with the subject of destiny and fulfillment. Very, very important. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Your peace and your eternal destiny is very important. Most people do not understand that there is only one gift you can give yourself from a human standpoint. That is fulfillment. Success is not a gift you give yourself, unfortunately. Success by its definition even comes by being a solution, providing a solution to others. The only gift you can give yourself is the gift of fulfillment. We teach in our school of ministry personal transformation class let me borrow their lecture for one minute and teach you what we call fulfillment i define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity i take it again that fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life you have spent your days effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity according to genesis 12 and verse 3 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed god wants us to live fulfilled lives second timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 i believe i'm right on that scripture 4 7 please give it to us i have fought a good fight I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. I taught you in a teaching this year, or was it last year, that life and destiny is warfare. You must know how to fight. Life is a race. You must know how to run. Life is a trust. You must know how to keep it. Please hear me. For as long as you are part of this vision, among the many the buffet of teachings lined up for you year in year out that includes this prophetic year of open doors are teachings that touch across these lives that's why sometimes you see me come on sunday and i'm teaching you on matters of prayer and faith then giving you wisdom about life and destiny like the law of seasons then coming from another dimension and helping you understand faith understand relationships all of these messages are to honor these foundational pillars let me recap one last time then we are ready to pray number one the first doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision is the message of salvation the highest in order of priority revealing jesus as we say number two the message of transformation this is where the teaching ministry comes, the ministry of the word of God and its power and ability to transform and to build. Number three, the message of empowerment. Impartation is a major, is a major mandate and call in this ministry to transfer the various levels of graces that make for the holistic equipping of the saints. Number four, the message of the supernatural. Signs, wonders, deliverances, breakthroughs by the spirit of god number five the message of purpose helping the body of christ and helping our global family to understand the dynamics and the principles that make for kingdom advance and then societal transformation i told you here that i have a covenant with god that i will never raise a people who are just spiritual alone 
there must be people who are useful to the kingdom and useful to society number six the message of love and unity we are nation builders we are builders of the body of Christ that is why we must continue to make our advocacy in love to help galvanize the gray areas littered across the body of Christ that God will help us that someday as preachers as members we will attain a state in the spirit that the Bible calls the unity of faith not uniformity but the unity of faith that regardless our denominational barriers a day will come we can hold hands and thank Jesus and shelve away our differences and focus on our similarities It's the same heaven that all of us are going to and then lastly number seven the message of lasting peace and fulfillment my highest definition of success as I have taught you is peace above and beyond progress progress is useless until peace is added to it Jesus calls himself the Prince of Peace not progress peace is very important he said peace I give you my peace I live with you not as the world gives he said in this world you will have many tribulations but be of good cheer he says I have overcome the world the Lord is speaking to our hearts tonight as we celebrate this mighty move of the spirit that has become a global movement an apostolic and a prophetic manifestation of the hand of God I was almost in tears throughout yesterday as I spent time just praying and thanking the Lord for his goodness and all I could say to him was Lord I thank you grant me the grace to continue to serve you grant me the grace to make that commitment God has helped us and tonight I'm about to speak over your life all those who are, are you know following and then as a global ministry but I really really want to thank God for what he has done it is amazing I cannot begin to say thank you to him my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you sing it one more time you made me great you made me special yeah. you made me great I give all I have to you my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you if Christ tarries at the end of my life the greatest testimony that I desire is not that this man was powerful the greatest testimony that I desire truly Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.